There is uh, obviously existing talent who would want to be upgraded, who need to be moved up to this profile of uh, uh, salons, that is a higher grade salons. And there are new talents which need to be infused into the system. I think these are the two basic requirements. A common grading system will definitely help us kind of quickly address our front-end requirement. We cannot at this stage get into some kind of an utopian uh, you know, um, uh, uh, debate wherein we say that it should be like that, it should be like this. It is, it, it is like what it is. Let's face reality. The second part uh, is basically the staff morale bit. I think obviously uh, the salon staff have never had it, the spa staff, salon staff, the makeup artists have never had it so good in their, li in, in their lifetime. I think the older generation is here, the younger generation is here. So I think it's a great time for all the artists in, in the business. I think they're all growing, they're kind of doubling their salaries in two years, uh, finding new opportunities to grow, finding, you know, training is coming free, brands are kind of going out of their way to keep uh, talent, individual owners are really, you know, kind of laying the red carpet, like Bharatiji has said, I mean, to kind of keep people in their fold. So it's a great, great, great situation, and I, so be it. So there's no harm in that being that. So expectation setting is ex required. Uh, the people have to be aligned to the organizational goals, I think that's, not, that's where the problem is. I think uh, uh, some time back, uh, I was in a program where uh, Franklin Covey uh, demonstrated uh, the uh, awareness of the employees in a company about the goals of the company. And it turned out that more than 50% didn't know the organizational goals. And out of the remaining 50, 24% where about they had a hazy view of the organization goals. So situation is, I, I'm not too sure that our companies run in a, in, a, in a kind of, in an environment where our employees exactly know what we are really trying to do. I think we are, if, if they are confused, and I think we also need to look, introspect, and see, uh, see, at, see uh, look inside, probably we are as confused as them. So, we are all kind of trying to grapple with the new kind of reality. And I, my only, uh, uh, what do you call, premise is that we all need to kind of do some soul searching. Um, regarding the, uh, the, the kind of initiatives that we need to take and the government angle that we have been talking about, uh, I think I, I have been, uh, you know, kind of interacting with the Labor Ministry and the, uh, the PM's Council on uh, skill, skilling, skill development, etc., And, you know, from the look of it, there seems to be a lot of avenues. For example, there are some 10,000 ITIs in this country. And I'm told that about 1,000 of them actually offer a beauty course. And they offer a spa course as well. So they offer all kinds of courses that you can think about. So, and in fact, uh, last week, I was going through the curriculum that the, the government uh, had sent us. And I was kind of quite happy to note that the basics are there. It's not as if the government doesn't know what it is doing. In fact, they are looking at avenues of kind of building this curriculum in an in a industry-friendly man manner. And they have actually gone to many of the industry experts and said, why don't you come on board and prepare a curriculum for us? So to that extent, there is something being done. Now the question is whether should the government do it or should the industry do it? Or should either the major players do it? So this kind of a confusion, I think we need to kind of align and we need to uh, debate and come to a common uh, ground on what is best for us, okay? Uh, uh, in fact, there are vocational training institutes. There are women-centric vocational training institutes which are churning out beauty courses. There are people who, are who, who can be picked up. Uh, there is a problem, there's a cultural issue. People are not ready to travel from one state to another, one region to another. So there are a lot of limitations. But like I said, the answer is somewhere in the problem itself. Uh, the only uh, uh, thing which we all commonly agree on is that Northeast seems to be the great you know, place to go for uh, picking uh, the right talent and kind of quickly skilling them into fitting into our kind of you know, business scenario. Lastly, I think uh, the, the whole uh, salon spa setup is kind of uh, very uh, different from, from, a, uh, from a retail model. Uh, 
having been uh, in other, uh, seen other retail models, let me tell you that this kind of multi-skilling is not required in elsewhere. For example, if you were to kind of go to a big bazaar or a chroma or something, you don't need to train beauticians differently, stylists differently, uh, and the managers differently. The soft skill aspects, technical aspects, okay? Um, I always say that there is a, there's a technocrat, there's a bureaucrat, you know, managers are the bureaucrats, the technocrats are the stylists in this one, they don't seem to get along. And in our, in our kind of scenario where we have a franchise system, then there is a complete, another complexity which comes in, we have an autocrat as well.